Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run for the weather warnings so we have got a rain warning issued for tomorrow across parts of southwest England and Wales as we are going to see some very heavy showers and perhaps organised areas of precipitation moving in. Now I do say precipitation because there is quite a high chance that we do see some snow mixed in with this as well especially over the higher ground but you can rule it out to low lying areas as well. I'm actually I'm surprised we haven't seen a snow or ice warning issued for some of those higher ground areas as it is looking fairly significant perhaps for some. We'll have a look at that in detail on the latest UKV going through the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as it is staying reasonably unsettled and it is staying fairly chilly as well. Nothing ridiculously cold but as we see tomorrow just about cold enough for some snow and that continues through the weekend to the start of next week with overnight frosts and wintry showers in places into the longer term it is looking highly likely now we see high pressure build to our north up towards scandinavia and we see easterly winds now we've still got a lot of uncertainty exactly how cold those easterly winds will be i must say the majority of runs have the temperatures around average maybe slightly above slightly below the surface of course it would be chilly because coming off a still pretty cold continent um and there are a few much colder runs appearing like we saw from the GEM yesterday, but at this stage still in the minority. But things could develop significantly over the coming days, so it will be one to continue to watch. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, which do you like and subscribe, and remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now, if you start on the live radar, you can see a big weather front across parts of eastern England at the moment. This is the cold front that is sweeping through, and behind it, we're seeing much chillier air getting dragged in. Already seeing some wintry showers across parts of Scotland, mostly to the high ground, but again, can't rule out to low-lying areas overnight tonight. This main precipitation band through eastern England has moved through very slowly through today, dumping quite a bit of rain around 10 to 15 millimetres quite widely, as has very slowly edged eastwards. Behind it, much drier but colder air, and then it's going to pick up some moisture tomorrow with more lower pressure, and of course with that cold air aloft we could see some really quite lively showers, as I said, that could include some snow. If you put on the temperatures as of around half six, you can see it is much chillier to the north and west behind this weather front. Temperatures here widely down to the mid to low single digits, maybe even getting below freezing overnight tonight. Again, brings the risk of ice, maybe a little bit of snow where those showers do persist. If you go over to the weather warnings, you can see we've got a, a rain warning issued for tomorrow across parts of Wales and southwest England from midnight tonight until 3 p.m. tomorrow. Again, we're looking at widely 10 to 15 millimetres rain, maybe as much as 30, with much of the rain falling in around three hours or so because it is coming in the form of some very heavy rain, a bit of occluded front and showery rain. As stated, there is some snow likely to affect some high routes and communities for a brief time. Now, that is true but i do think it's going to be a little bit longer than a brief period the latest ukv which is one of the models that the met office looks at quite a lot it's their own model is actually showing around five to ten centimeters of snow for some higher ground across wales maybe even into, into the peak district through tomorrow evening so yes for some it may be brief but some areas the latest runs are showing something quite a bit more significant low-lying areas there is the risk in places as we'll see in a minute but nothing too significant there i am as I said surprised we've not got at least a yellow warning issued over higher ground of wales maybe the peak district and an ice warning issued quite widely because even where we see rain during the day we could see those temperatures plummet overnight down towards freezing or below freezing and then we do see the risk of ice Perhaps that gets issued tomorrow morning, but I um, have been critical when we see these really late warnings because the point of a warning is to let people know to take precautionary action, to change their plans. There's no point putting it into force a couple hours before the danger weather is going to arrive. So uh, again, it could be issued tomorrow morning, but in my opinion, for something like this, where it is relatively low risk if they get it wrong, it's not like it's substantial, it's not like it's red warning or amber warning, surprise is not been issued just as a precautionary measure, because it is looking cold 
and it is looking like a lot of precipitation around tomorrow. Now, if you look at the latest UKV, you can see why I do think there should be a snow warning issued for higher ground and maybe an ice warning issued widely as well. You can see that precipitation clearing eastwards at the moment and we see the next band of precipitation arriving overnight tonight in from the west. Across parts of the Republic of Ireland into Northern Ireland, you can see lots of scattered snow within the main area of precipitation. And that's really where it hits a moderate hills toward turning wintry. Again, will be unlikely to settle or settle significantly, but could see a slushy covering in a few places. As that precipitation heads into parts of Wales and southwest England, you see over some of the downs across parts of southwest England, for the moors up towards parts of Wales, we are seeing purples and pinks, which is snow and some really dark colours there, indicating some really quite heavy snow is looking possible. Remember, heavier precipitation encourages evaporative cooling, and that makes the chance of wintriness even higher. So it's not like it's very, very marginal where we are uh, unlikely to see any heavy precipitation forcing that freezing level lower. It is looking like to be some really quite heavy precipitation. So I do think there's a, a really quite high chance we see falling snow in these areas, maybe even accumulating snow. Low-lying areas as well could see some snow for a time there as that moves through. On the back edge of this, across parts of the Republic of Ireland, parts of Wales, again, don't think there's going to be significant snow, but definitely a chance of a covering in places uh, and at least quite a lot of falling snow, which can, of course, cause disruption from lack of visibility and things like that. Through the rest of the Friday, that precipitation just swirls around and we see lots of heavy convective showers through the afternoon. And you see, again, that snow pushes into parts of the Peak District into northern England. That, again, could be a warning uh, warranted for that. Showers continue to affect much of England and Wales. Again, quite a few of them have got wintry flavour with a lot of grout pool within them as they are going to be some really quite hefty showers under the centre of this low. Then overnight into a Friday into Saturday, we can see another area of precipitation or showers in the southeast. Not showing much snow here, but there is the risk again where we see evaporative cooling bringing that freezing level down. Into Saturday, still seeing snow showers further north. It's pretty widespread actually in terms of those pinks there. And then into Sunday, slowly things start to turn a little bit mild as the wind veers more from the southwesterly. So we see another low moving in. Again, air masses are still reasonably chilly, just not quite as cold. If we do look at the snow depth, you can see into tomorrow, the uh, UKV has quite a lot of snow over higher ground of southwest England, parts of Wales, up towards the Peak District, showing 5 to 10 centimetres possible, and maybe a dusting to low lying areas for a time. That continues into Friday and Saturday, transitioning northwards, and then into Sunday and Monday. All of that snow melts away as the temperatures do rise to around that sort of 7 or 8 degree mark in the day. So, again, I'm really do think there should be a yellow ice or snow warning issued for some regions haven't got it so please do take care be aware tomorrow especially in the southwest where you could wake up and see lots of heavy icy rain or you could even see a covering of snow for a time as this precipitation moves through now if you look at the temperatures you can see through today pretty chilly but nothing crazy around five to nine degrees but overnight tonight temperatures dropping well below freezing across northern and western areas into that southwest corner a little bit more marginal uh, hovering around freezing or slightly above into the morning as that precipitation fall uh, moves in temperatures not getting much above three to five degrees which again is in that range seeing some really heavy precipitation could bring it down to two or three evaporative cooling the risk of falling snow through much of tomorrow temperatures not going to rise much above five to seven degrees it's going to be a really quite chilly start to meteorological spring into march temperatures over higher ground of wales and north england not getting much above freezing overnight temperatures going to plummet away towards freezing again and that's why i think especially for western and northern areas definitely an ice warning is warranted as we are going to see lots of slippery surfaces around because i said regardless of if you see snow in the day any of that precipitation falling as rain during the day will still be there overnight. Lots of puddles, lots of slick surfaces, which will all freeze overnight. Into Saturday afternoon, still a chilly day, a widely from low single digits up towards maybe seven or eight. And that continues into Sunday with quite a widespread overnight frost. Um, by Sunday afternoon, again, looking at five to eight degrees. Another pretty harsh overnight frost there into Monday with clearer skies. That could be the harshest frost we've had in a while there. And Monday, again, looking at around the low single digits up to eight or nine, slowly rising as we head into next week. Now, if you look at the long range charts, 
you are going to see easty winds arrive in early uh, in early March. You can see low pressure plunging southwards over the next 24 hours. That's going to bring the wintriness in places and generally unsettled conditions. And then high pressure builds up towards Scandinavia by the start of next week, not really affecting us anything too uh, anything uh, too major initially, just really trapping lows near us. But eventually we see easterly winds moving in around seven to ten days time. You can see it's more of a flat easterly to maybe even southeasterly, so we're not expecting anything too majorly cold. Cold. Upper air temperatures hovering around average, maybe slightly below, slightly above at times. Any major cold air is going further eastwards at this stage. But regardless, it would be chilly. Low dew points could see an inversion take place. Again, we're about a good six to eight weeks too early for an easterly wind to produce something a little bit warmer. Come June, July, or even in May, if the continent warms up, we can see actually pretty decent conditions um, from an easterly flow. But during March and even most of April, yeah, easterly flows, uh, even when upper air temperatures aren't actually that cold, can still be pretty miserable, still can be pretty cold. Now, if you compare to the GM, now that went very cold last night. But what's it showing today? Again, uh, low pressure of top of us. Green, uh, high pressure develops towards Scandinavia, pulls in an easterly wind, and you can see it, it does go flat easily, but it's similar to the GFS, where it's not remarkably cold, the very cold air staying out into Eastern Europe. So, yeah, not producing anything too major, but still would be chilly, uh, and still would feel pretty cold. As I said in yesterday's video, it's pretty typical, the point where we get proper easterly synoptics, there is no cold air to our east. Earlier in the winter, when we've struggled to get a Scandinavian high going or proper blocking to our northeast going, the cold air has been abundant. Just typical of what we see in this country. Now, if we do look at the latest ECMWF, it hasn't uh, need to refresh it to let it fully load. Again, low pressure jumping over the top of us, high pressure building towards Scandinavia, and we do see easterlies and actually we do see some cold easterlies. Now, by no means is it a beast from the east. We would need to see minus 15 to minus 20 degree isotherm, but actually the synoptics are actually very similar to the beast from the east uh, from just a pressure pattern point of view. A flat easterly with lower heights developing over the top of us with relatively cold air. As I said, it's a good 10 to maybe 15 degrees warmer with upper air temperatures than we saw for all the beasts from the east, but it is still cold, if not really quite cold indeed. Temperatures will be struggling to get much above three or four degrees by day, and overnight not getting much above uh, freezing there. And you see this little low pressure system in the southeast corner, that could cause problems for snowfall if we do see that overnight, uh, as that would really allow a lot of convective showers to get going, and even areas of persistent precipitation as said would fall as snow in this sort of pattern. So I hadn't looked at the ECM though prior to recording this video and I had initially thought that most runs are going for a more of an average sort of easterly but we've seen another colder run today it was the GM yesterday today it's the ECM WF. But regardless of what the ECM WF operational was showing the ensembles aren't reflecting anything too cold yet. Over the next five, six, seven days, below average. Beyond that, we trend back towards average, hovering up around, maybe slightly above, slightly below, depending on the day. You can see there are some very cold runs in the extended range out towards sort of day 10 and beyond. Uh, those will be the ones that are going along with the ECWF operational run. But you can see the majority are hovering around average. So there are some going for that cold outcome, but the majority aren't. You can see precipitation is tailoring, uh, it's, it's petering out in the longer term which definitely does, it does give a big indication of high pressure building in, but it's likely not going to go to zero because with an easterly wind, we will likely see showers, convective showers coming in from the east. If you look at the new snow depth spikes, you see actually for tomorrow, the GFS ensembles, quite a few do show some snow for London. Again, don't think there's going to be any settling snow for London, but the risk of falling snow or at least some sleetiness perhaps in the afternoon or even in the evening as we see precipitation move through. Again, a few snow spikes appearing into mid-March again before that potential easterly. Dew points as well in the longer term, you see a lot of dew points dropping pretty cold and some going very cold. Uh, yes, the average is, uh, is lower now, but the uh, sort of the uncertainty and the spread is much higher in the longer term because of that continental flow, there is the risk of much lower dew points there.
And finally, two meter temperatures, generally pretty stationary, uh, chilly at the moment, maybe climbing by a couple of degrees into next week, but not really getting much above that, maybe dipping beyond that. And if we finish by looking at the latest ECM OF, yeah, unfortunately, the ECM OF doesn't seem to have updated today, but you can see yesterday's update uh, showing something similar to what the GFS was showing. Chilly over the coming five to seven days with quite a few cold runs appearing in the longer term, but majority in and around average. So we've got a bit of colder, maybe even wintry weather over the coming days. Then it goes a little bit more moderate next week. And then we could see cooler conditions return by the end of next working week with easterly winds attempting to return. It does look quite likely we see an easterly flow, but exactly how cold it gets, a lot of uncertainty. Still being teased by some runs like the GM yesterday, the ECM that we have today. So all hope for a proper colder easterly wind is not gone. But at the moment, I must stress the most favoured outcome is for more of an average easterly wind with temperatures in around zero degrees at 850 HPA. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.